Manchester United's midfield has been a laughing stock, really, for so long. Despite all the money that we've spent, we've been stuck with Freddie McTominay in midfield. Now, both of those players have their purposes, and they probably will be good squad members for Manchester United next year. But the ultimate reality is that if you're going to try and compete, the likes of Liverpool and City, you can't be starting with Fred and McTominay every week in the Premier League. Absolutely cannot. So the idea this summer that Eric Ten Hag, not the idea, he will get a new midfield. Now, we didn't know who that was going to be, but now we're hearing reports that Frankie de Jong and Christian Eriksen, the two key priority signings for Eric Ten Hag. So I want to do this video to take a look at what would our midfield actually look like? How would it operate if de Jong came in and Eriksen came in? Because that doesn't contain that powerful central midfielder that I think we all felt we need, needed. Does that change? We'll have a conversation. You can let me know in the comments below. Make sure, if you do enjoy the video by the end of it, peeps, go down there and subscribe to United People's TV. Uh, it's free. Go down there, hit the subscribe button, bang, hit the notification bell as well. Get a ping every time we go live with a video like this. Absolutely beautiful number. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about De Jong and Ericsson. It's not really a conversation I thought we'd have at the start of the summer, but hey, United always surprise you. Now, these are the reports coming out from Mike Provide from The Telegraph. As I said, Mike was close to the Ten Hag, the United deal the whole way across. So I would like to say that his sources are very good. So I think he's somebody we can trust inside this situation. Because De Jong has always been, we've known, number one. But it's Christian Eriksen alongside now as, as an equal priority. This is what he's saying. De Jong and Eriksen are the names that are highest on the list of Ten Hag. These are his number one priorities. Ten Hag has explained to Manchester United board that the arrival of these players is crucial for his style of play. That I absolutely agree with. And that's very easy to explain inside this video, which I will do. He goes on to say that Eric Ten Hag remains firm in his belief that investments in midfield is highly necessary in order to see a change in Manchester United's football, which has to be attacking based. Other positions need strengthening too, but midfield is the most important issue at the club. And there will not be one United fan who disagrees with you on that one. I think our midfield, our attack, sorry, our defence, our midfield and attack last year, I think our defence and our attack, they were nowhere near good enough compared to what they, I think, should have been. Whereas our midfield, well, nobody was really surprised what our midfield did last year. It was kind of the level of our midfield. I think the defence and the attack should be better themselves by better coaching next year, but the midfield would need reinforcements. Now, De Jong, I mean, we've spoken about De Jong. I don't need to really speak about him too much more. But in terms of Christian Eriksen here, this is brand new, brand new from Fabrizio Romano saying, look, Christian Eriksen will make a decision on his future, the club, uh, future club very soon. Manchester United have confirmed their interest to his agent, which we already know. And this is the interesting point here with Ericsson, uh, coming from Alistair Gold as well, who is uh, considered a very strong source when it comes to Spurs news, saying, look, being keen to stay in London is not number one on Ericsson's priority list anymore. And Spurs really haven't gone back in for Ericsson. So United have kind of got a bit of a free run at free Christian Ericsson. But this is where it gets interesting, right? I'm going to now take a look at the stats Take a look at De Jong, take a look at Ericsson, take a look at their strengths, and we know where their strengths are. You don't really need the stats to show you where the strengths are, but we'll do it anyway. And then we'll put them both into the, to the team and see how that midfield lines up, because there's no doubt that Frankie De Jong and Christian Ericsson, if they both come in, change United in possession. My word, that it would absolutely transform us. If you're looking at the pass, it, this is all, it's what it's all about, about pass completion, about progressive passes, progressive carries, 90, 94%. Touches in it. He is so good at bringing the ball forward and possession. That's the core strengths of Frankie de Jong. If you're taking a look at the core strengths of Christian Eriksen, progressive passes, progressive carries, pass completion. Jeez, that's a, that's a horrendous pass completion. See that one. Wow. But look at these. Top 1% for all of these. That's, that's, that's pretty mad. Didn't know how many shots Christian Eriksen always had. And there's no doubt that if you see this midfield for Manchester United this next season, right? This is purely hypothetical, of course. We're going according to these reports from Mike Vavage. We're having a conversation about how this midfield could line up because we need to talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of it. I think so, anyway. There is no doubt that that midfield there is going to be so much better at receiving the ball from deep. You would imagine if it was to, if it was to happen and they were to line up, that De Jong would do what he typically does. Uh, when you see how De Jong played at Ajax, you look at... The fullbacks going forward quite a lot. And I mean, in midfield too, that would then see him because he played on the, on, if he's playing on the right, the left, sorry, the right hand side here, it would probably be 
dropping in to that position there in a midfield three, in a centre back three that allows that midfielder to go forward a little bit more. And it allows De Jong to play make from deep. And that's how he could operate. But it depends at Manchester United what we want to do. Because if you're looking at Christian Eriksen and you are looking at Frankie De Jong, I think there's a lot of similarities in their game. There's no doubt that in possession, both of those players will significantly help Manchester United. But I have to say the idea of it does concern me because if you look at that and you look at the options we've got on the bench, Martinez, I put down there, is a little conversation we can have towards the end of the video. Just another hypothetical. But this is what we've got inside the squad. We've got Donny van der Beek. We've got Fred. We've got McTominay. We've got Garner. Who out of those players, you're probably going to do that. Maybe, maybe not. You're probably, it's going to be McTominay or Fred. Who's going to be that ball winner when United need to actually get possession? When United need to protect that defence? That is what that midfield there of Eriksen and De Jong, in my opinion, doesn't really do. And if you take one quick look at the stats, it kind of proves my point. If we scroll down here, we can see where all the strengths are for Frankie De Jong. But where are the weaknesses? The weaknesses are down here in terms of defensive actions, pressures, tackles, interceptions, blocks and clearances. And where do you think Christian Eriksen's weaknesses are as well? If you go down there with pressures, tackles, blocks, clearances. I think it would be a massive oversight for Manchester United to go after Eriksen, to go after De Jong, but again, still not look at somebody like Ibrahim Sangare, uh, somebody like Aurelien Chouameni, somebody like... Bubakar Kamara, somebody who will be that Fabinho style of player, that Rodri style of player. I mean, I've, I've really repeated this so many times that it, I'm bored of saying it, and I apologise if you're bored of hearing it. But when we're seeing reports here, as I said, that Frankie de Jong and Christian Eriksen are the, are the two names that are highest on his list, I suppose it goes to show where Eric Ten Hag's priorities lie. He wants his system to work. And for his system to work, he needs possession-based footballers. People who want the ball. People who always show themselves to the ball. Not anybody who would run away. And again, if we're looking at uh, strengths and weaknesses of his team and the current midfielders, that's just something that Matomane doesn't do. He doesn't show himself for the ball enough. Fred doesn't show himself for the ball enough. And certainly not in deeper lying positions. Maybe a little bit more aggressive going forward, but deeper lying, no. But that's why the idea of De Jong and Eriksen will massively, massively appeal to Eric Ten Hag, because both of these players will have the ability to just drop into these positions, drop there. They'll want the ball. They'll want the ball deep. They'll want the ball on the edge of their own box. And that will give United a new ability to play out from the back with the ball, which is ultimately what is needed to get this Eric Ten Hag system to work. So I, I do understand it. I completely understand it. And for the fact that Christian Eriksen is available on a free transfer, even more so, right? Because it's not as if you're spending... 70, 80 million on De Jong and another 40, 50 million on Christian Eriksen for signing two players who realistically kind of operate in the same area of the pitch and have a similar set of characteristics. But maybe it's going to be, if it's De Jong and Eriksen as a priority, that's De Jong with Eriksen as a backup and that we're still going to get somebody in here. And then that's why I said down here, a little round conversation, maybe someone like Martinez. We've seen the Lissandro Martinez rumours this morning coming from Ajax. Now, He's not played really in defensive midfield for Ajax for the last couple of years. He's operated more as, as a centre-back. That's, that's, his, that's his best and, well, it seems seemingly his best position. But I think it was in a 2019-20 season, he had like 20-plus games for there for Ajax. Martinez can operate inside that role. Maybe that's why he's looking at him. Because he's somebody who can play centre-back, somebody who can play central defensive midfielder. And again, somebody who's schooled in the Ajax way. So the Martinez thing is an interesting conversation. But I want to know where you stand on the idea there that we could see, do you think this is actually possible? Do you think this could work in a Premier League environment? De Jong and Eriksen together. There's no doubt that from a possession perspective, from a build-up perspective, De Jong and Eriksen transform this Manchester United team. We will look so much better playing out from the back with the ball. We couldn't really look much worse, let's be completely honest. But I would still definitely have my concerns about how we would be out of possession. When United... Of uh, backs walking back towards our own goal, pressure's coming on us. Are De Jong and Eriksen really going to be the two ball winners that we need them to be? 
Is someone like Bruno going to be tasked with dropping significantly deeper to try and support them? Or is Bruno going to end up playing on the left-hand side if we've got two deeper playmakers in De Jong and Eriksen? I think it adds more questions to the role of Bruno if that midfield operates. I don't really think Bruno can operate there anymore. I think if, again, all hypothetical here, ladies and gents, but if that was to happen, I think you're probably more likely to see something like that. Maybe. Maybe even something like that. Just curveballs here. Just posing questions. But maybe you could see someone like Donny van der Beek dropping into that position. Bruno going out on the left where he doesn't need as much positional discipline. And Sancho operating on the right-hand side. Not sure what that means for Rashford. You can let me know. But if Ronaldo goes there, does that leave too much of a gap? There's different questions that every player brings. But the idea of De Jong and Eriksen, I think on paper, I understand it from a possession perspective, from a build-up perspective. I would fear about it from an out-of-possession perspective. How could that team control... And let's be honest, we're not going to control the games like that against Liverpool and City. We're just going to get overrun then, surely, in midfield. You let me know what you think about it. But according to, as I said, Mike Vavage, Frankie de Jong and Christian Eriksen are the two names atop, on the top of that list. Are they going to be the midfield revolution that we wanted this summer? Is it, is it enough? You can let me know what you think. I think there's positives to it. I've explained some of those, but I do think there are concerns I would still have if they were the only two midfield signings that Man United made this summer. James Garner, you can bring him into the equation as well, of course. But again, James Garner's, in my opinion, a little bit better going forward than he is on the edge of his own box. You can let me know what you think in the comments below about that midfield. Just let me know. And make sure you subscribe to United People TV if you're new. And no doubt, we'll be speaking hopefully a bit more about De Jong this week when the, when the second big goes in and gets accepted. Fingers crossed.